we're going to do today is um, uh, basically I'm going to try to introduce you to this wonderful topic of computer vision. So a uh, little overview, some really, really basic fundamentals, some examples, some state of the art, the evolution, and also talk about the career path and, and job opportunities. So basically, what is computer vision? Um, it's, it's basically the, the science and technology of machines uh, that see. Um, it's building systems that obtain the information from images. And the image of the data can take many forms, video sequences, depth images, um, for example, from your, you know, your uh, uh, depth sensors, multiple cameras, multidimensional medical scanners. So we've got all kinds of image capture. We've got visible light. We've got thermographics, which sort of infrared sensors. You know, maybe you've played with uh, fluor cameras before. And then there's radar, ultra wideband, MM wave, sub terahertz. Sub uh, terahertz uh, radar is pretty new coming on. There's some really new stuff there, and that's already bringing radar into the uh, spectrum of optical light. Uh, time of flight sensor uh, for uh, the 3D. That's what you're getting in all your new sort of, sort of cell phones. So basically, the goal of computer vision is to understand images. So you see this image, and yeah, understand. <laughs> so it goes back, actually, to this whole field. Um, to uh, 1966 when Marvin Minsky. Marvin Minsky was uh, a professor uh, um, at MIT, uh, really well known in artificial intelligence, wrote a lot about things, uh, these sort of neural networks that everyone talks about. Actually, Minsky did a lot of work on these, uh, basically called uh, 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 connectionist um, theory, the symbolic, there's different kinds of schools of MI, so of AI. So he basically, um, asked one of his uh, undergrad students, uh, go spend the summer, um, hook up a camera to a computer, and see if you can get the computer to describe what it saw. Well, you know, as we can imagine, it wasn't as easy as that sounds. So, because basically, on the left, that's what, what we see. And what a computer sees is basically a bunch of little digital things, little points that are, have certain kinds of numbers. Um, and basically, these are pixels uh, in the case of 2D and voxels uh, in the case of 3D, uh, which is basically kind of like pixels, but in uh, three-dimensional space. So in order to actually approach this field, it, it's, you know, when we talk about computer vision, we're meaning actually a lot of different stuff. There's sort of like machine vision in here, there's image processing, and actually there are all these other fields that are coming in like artificial intelligence and machine learning, and there's a lot of math and there's computer graphics and signal processing and neurobiology. There's a lot of stuff in there, okay? And um, there, you know, there, there is a convergence. So there are things, uh, for example, that we used to call image processing that we now call, we now include within computer vision and the same other, you know, in, in this uh, diagram, it looks as if they're kind of sharply defined, but they're not really, they're all kind of flowing, uh, the various things, but it's, it's a huge and vast field. Um, so again, um, trying to give you a, a sort of a little bit of history, in 66, Minsky said, do this, and in 2012, uh, basically, we had a big bang um, for computer vision. Uh, and that is when uh, a neural network won a, a big competition at uh, CDPR called the Image Competition. Uh, in 2014, we had uh, something called GANs. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about them we'll uh, uh, a little bit later. But basically, if you've seen uh, a lot of these discussions uh, about sort of deep fakes, okay, those are what GANs are all about. And um, there are some new approaches uh, to uh, neural networks for imaging uh, called uh, uh, capsule networks. That's Hinton in 2017. And just to get you the feeling that computer vision wasn't just Minsky and 2012 when basically uh, AI started really kicking off, there was a, a lot in between. Okay? Uh, at various stages, it seemed like a lot of advancement. Um, you know, we had, for example, in the 90s, we had already uh, uh, a lot of face recognition, all, all kinds of things going on. 
Uh, in 2000, we had all kinds of other little approaches. But to get the feeling, you know, it, it's an evolution, but also in the last couple of years, uh, a, a pretty, pretty major uh, explosion. Okay. So, you know, you're asking yourself, so, well, okay, that's cool, but why study it? Well, one of the reasons is, well, images and, you know, in movies, they're everywhere. Um, our, our cell phones um, are probably all filled with more images and movies than we want to probably admit to. Um, there are all kinds of applications because the technology is getting there. Um, we want to do uh, the 3D world from pictures, which we can do. Um, and uh, in the automotive, which many of you are, are actually uh, keenly interested in, it's, it's the basis for these advanced driving automated systems, uh, autonomous vehicles, self-driving cars. The car has to, you know, is seeing around itself, okay? Automated surveillance, who's doing what? Movie post-processing, face finding, all kinds of interesting stuff. There's things that have been coming up uh, which are kind of interesting, for example, in medical diagnostics. Uh, you can detect by looking at at the iris of eyes and doing all kinds of networks to find out what kind of diseases, for example, diabetes, uh, certain kinds of heart problems. Really, really amazing things. Um, we may do, you know, one of the reasons is to try to understand, well, you see all these object recognition, you actually want to know, well, how are they working? What's behind it? It's cool, but why is it doing this? Why, how is it working? You want to understand vision. And, you know, least but not, you know, last but not least, it's really a hot and in demand field and there are lots and lots of job prospects and the potential for growth. Uh, I talked about that big bang a few years ago. Things haven't really even gotten going. Yet, okay. So wh what I want to do in this webinar, and, and you know, most of the stuff I think we'll, we'll go to the end when we actually are, are you know, engaged in some discussions. Uh, because you know, each of you, I'm sure, has some particular interests uh, or particular questions which I can't gauge because I don't know you yet. Um, so let's look at some examples and um, understand what these can do. So, for example, a very, very simple algorithm here you'll see here is uh, um, something called edge detection. Um, and this is um, what, for example, you can use to detect um, lines. Actually, you know, this is a very simple uh, uh, version of edge detection, just as an example. Uh, in a production uh, vehicle, we'll be a little bit more sophisticated because sometimes the lines aren't there and we'll be doing a little bit more. But this is the basis of this sort of lay, uh, lane keep assist, where when you're driving along uh, in some new cars, as I don't know in India if it's the case, but in the US it's mandated, uh, the car will notify you when you're kind of leaving the lane. Um, yeah. Now, th this edge detection, um, which, you know, uh, is, th there, are, there are a number of algorithms around this, such as uh, Huff and NCAN and whatever, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that within the course. Um, they have other kinds of applications. So, for example, there's something called uh, building information management, which is something really new in construction. And uh, here is an example uh, of a video. Uh, of uh, I actually shot this with a uh, uh, with my cell phone uh, of a a, um, um, a research lab a construction glass and this is one of the offices and what we were what I'm interested here is actually getting the sort of edges and the corners so that I can align uh, models uh, 3D models to them uh, for doing uh, augmented reality so that's a, a nice simple uh, but really really cool use case for edge detection. Now, this is uh, something, and I have to, you know, as I put the disclaimer, it's a trend, so, you know, but I, I'm pretty enthusiastic about this. this is a very cool application of edge detection. Uh, what what uh, uh, my friend and his company Quake uh, have done is, is basically applied uh, different kinds of, uh, uh, of image sensors uh, and doing sort of edge detection uh, for firefighters so they can look uh, and, and see things uh, where you normally can't see anything. And so he's doing sort of a smart edge detection, hotspot, thermal edge. So, you know, there's a thermal camera uh, in the, the firefighter has a um, helmet. Uh, there's like a little monitor or whatever. If you're interested, you can see it in the internet. Um, very, very cool application of something. 
like edge detection. So, and, and I think there are lots and lots of um, cool applications that people haven't even thought of yet. So moving on, um, you know, what we do in, in uh, uh, computer vision is sometimes things like image enhancement. So here's a, a classical approach, which, you know, we used to call image processing, which is what we do, um, of basically taking an image, running some things called certain kinds of filters, looking at various pixels and trying to do a little bit of math on them to uh, uh, improve uh, an image. So you can see the before and after, um, you know, yeah, it's a little, you know, the image has been sharpened up a little bit, okay? Uh, the state of the art uh, has, has really gone on using AI, uh, which is, uh, you know, which is using approaches of neural networks. And neural networks, basically, you can think of them as being sort of like search algorithms and statistical guessing, saying, okay, you know, normally I, I see this and this is what I expect, and you could use this to reconstruct. So here's something from, from Microsoft where they've um, enhanced photos. And if you look at, if you look at the, uh, the, the uh, ones on the left and the ones on the right, you can see it's actually pretty, pretty spectacular. And uh, yeah, okay. And uh, here's just just to give an idea for those who, like, you know, looked at the topic a little bit. There is this sort of deep learning, where uh, we actually the model is learning the various features, and then there is your traditional approach where you have features where you say, okay, I'm looking at an edge, I'm looking at these various objects, and I train them to do various things. And the the, the trend increasingly is to this thing called deep learning, this sort of end to end. There are of course limits. Um, but uh, the results are pretty, um, pretty spectacular. Um, um, okay. So uh, moving on, um, one of the things that we do a lot in uh, computer vision is object detection or object tracking. So there are, again, loads and loads and loads of algorithms. Some of them go from uh, classic ones like template-based. A template is like if you think of, uh, you know, like uh, these things that you like cut out and, you know, with a spray paint, okay, and you, you'll, you'll paint it on the wall. That's kind of what a template is, and you could use this to, to, to also find objects and to track them. They have their limitations, they have their uses, and all the way to state-of-the-art um, applications. Um, I, I mentioned convolutional networks. Again, um, they're basically you have this input. It's going through a, a, a bunch of, uh, you can think of it as like uh, matrices. And these matrices uh, are taking your various pixels, which we saw earlier in this stuff, and applying some, some weights to this to create a function to basically go through and, and do the classification. And there's a little bit of a background to that uh, where you're training it with data, the data is going back and finding errors, changing these various uh, weights, et cetera. But again, well, uh, this is a, a huge topic and we'll address this actually in some of our courses. Um, and CNNs uh, or AI um, has been like huge uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the news. And uh, I mentioned this in my uh, earlier on in terms of uh, this sort of computer vision. The Big Bang really is, is 2012. Um, starting around 2007, um, there were some people, there was uh, 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 Fei Li and some people at Princeton uh, started to assemble uh, ImageNet, basically a large database of annotated images. And annotated images are basically things, this is a dog, this is a cat, kind of objects for recognition. So you can do research because the idea was, is, you know, you need uh, images and you need labels and you want to actually understand um, to do this. So starting around 2010, uh, there was this uh, large scale visual recognition challenge. And, uh, you know, they're always being presented over at CDPR and other places. Uh, and the idea was, is one of the ways of advancing actually um, large scale image, uh, 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 image recognition or object recognition is to um, make a competition. There are all kinds of competition, there are competitions in OCR, there are all kinds of, this is a big advancement. So, Anyway, so the first uh, year or so, people did, you know, tried normal standard approaches. And then in 2012, 
um, Alex Zuteski and some of the guys over at University of Toronto won this competition, competition by a massive margin, and they used the CNN. And the following year, everybody used CNN. And since then, actually, a couple of years down the road, actually, the competition stopped being held because the, uh, the results were so good <laughs> that there wasn't really much of a competition left to actually do. Um, and, you know, some of you, um, I'm sure, are probably asking, well, why 2012? And, okay, ImageNet came along and there was this competition. But part of the big basis was, if you see these, these neural networks, they're, they're not new. They've been around for a while. Uh, they go back actually to the late 40s. Uh, in the 50s, there was a lot of work about it. Um, in the 60s, Minsky, uh, that fellow that I mentioned before, wrote a lot about uh, sort of these, sort of not really the current modern neural network, but you know about these sorts of models. Um, and uh, our current model, uh, our, our current modern neural networks, basically uh, those are, are from the 80s and 90s, but basically we had some new hardware. And we had ways to, to program them uh, with CUDA, uh, which came along in 2007 and a lot of new hardware. So it's been a, a pretty massive computational change. And this is allowed, for example, to do things like face detection in your um, cheap point and shoot uh, digi cam. Um, it's also what's behind a roadside interview. This is a found picture. Um, I wanted to have something from India. Um, okay. And, you know, a lot of new cars, for example, the Mercedes and some of the other cars, they will read this uh, uh, 40 um, kilometers an hour and then they will limit uh, the speed. And um, there's a lot more to road sign, uh, road sign recognition than one thinks because one needs to also handle adversarial attacks, uh, signs that are not in context. Um, these are just a couple of like sort of examples of that. So it's, you know, it, it's on one level, it's not that difficult. On other levels, it's, you know, it, there's, there's something to it. Um, 